This video is for lash lift and brow lamination and I would start all my videos the same as if you I first got to work. So the first thing I do when I get to work is wash my hands. Go to the sink, wet my hands, find a coin size amount of liquid hand soap, wash my hands down to my wrists, wash the back of my hands down to my wrists. I wash my fingers and I wash the back of my fingers. I wash my fingertips and nails. I wash between my fingers. I'm always gonna wash between my fingers and my thumbs. Washing my thumbs, washing my wrists. And I would do all of that interlocking washing motion for a minimum of 20 to 30 seconds. And when I feel I've gotten everything washed, I do a good proper rinse underneath that running water at the sink. And then I find either disposable paper towels or a clean towel. And then I turn the faucet off with the towels, dry my hands off. Paper towels go into the trash. That clean towel is now dirty and it would go in a closed container until time to do laundry. Then I find my hand sanitizer, that 70% ethyl alcohol, and I sanitize my hands thoroughly. Then once my hands are sanitized, I'm able to start prepping my room for my client because I'm gonna get everything done ahead of time before my client's appointment time so that I'm prepared and ready upon their arrival and I can um, stay on time with the service as well as my day and the client's day. So it's critical to do everything you can before the client gets here. So what you're gonna do before the client gets here to get ready is you're gonna disinfect your workstation, your bed and equipment using a disinfectant wipe reading manufacturer's instructions. You're gonna check equipment to ensure that all devices are in safe working order and plugged into a working receptacle. You'll dispense products needed for the service. And the way that you do that is prepare disposable portion cups for each product with a portion of the product by opening the top of the container and ensuring the tip of the nozzle does not come into contact with the disposable portion cup tray. Or you can remove the product with a disinfectant or clean single-use spatula Close the lid to the product and set the portion cup tray on the tray. You'll drape your facial bed using one fitted sheet, one flat sheet, and three towels. You'll place clean laundered sheets down on the disinfected facial bed, placing a towel horizontally at the head of the bed. You'll lay a hairnet and a headband on top of the first towel along with a rolled towel to support the head and neck of the client. You'll save the third towel to lay across the client's decollete or you can use disposable ta table paper to drape the bed. We are using the sheet and blanket method, of course, with the um, fitted towel, fitted sheet and the flat sheet, sorry, and the towel at the top. And then of course, you, your next step would be client consultation. But before that even happens, I'm gonna show you what I have on my tray prepared for brow lamination and the lash lift. So. What I have are cotton rounds, two by twos, and then I always have some four squares in case I need it. I've got a pair of disposable gloves because you're gonna wear gloves for this service. I have disposable eye pads that we're gonna be using under the client's eyes. I have um, wood stick Q-tips just cause I always have that um, and we'll need it. I have like a barrier cream, something like petroleum jelly that I'll be putting down to protect the client and then putting the pads over. Of course, I've got disposable mascara wands if needed. I have makeup remover. I have um, the lifting lotion. I have the neutralizing lotion. Of course, I have the wax for the brown lamination part. I've got um, my bonding adhesive for the lash lift and the brow lamination. I've got my rods for the lash lift. And I have um, my Y comb for the brow lamination. I have my little applicators for the brow lamination products, um, and I have my tool, of course, for the lash lifting, and then I have my brushes that are gonna be applying the, uh, I'm gonna use these tools for the lash lift, and I'm gonna use these two tools for the brown lamination. So I have lots of implements that will get sanitized after, disinfected after, but that's what I have ready to go. Um, before my client comes, I am prepared, and I have different sides of rods for her lash uh, lift based on what her needs might be. Um, and once again, just saying that I prepared my bed and my space and all of those things because you want to be ready and um, punctual when your client arrives. Your client will appreciate that um, and we'll see you as professional and it will be really important for you to, to learn your pace and stay on time um, for me to do that and um, just be respectful of everybody's time. So 
We've gotten our products and our room prepared. We now are ready for our client consultation. The only thing to note is that I will be approaching my client for client consultation with clean hands. I'm not gonna stop here and wash my hands again. I will be doing a hand wash before I start the service. Just, so, just to note that I would always go to that client with clean hands. So I'm gonna greet my client who's just arrived with clean hands and escort them to the work area. I will assess the client's current style and determine the client's preferences. I will assess the client's needs. Before I go further, this is a service, the lash lift and the brow lamination, that you would have had to have some kind of communication with the client prior as to what the requirements are um, after the service. So how long maybe they can't wear makeup or get their eyelashes wet or brows wet. All of that's gonna be important for you to have that conversation with the client in order for the service that they're paying for to last. Um, so they know that, and of course you're gonna do your follow-up again after you're um, done with the service. So you'll assess the client's skin by performing a skin analysis to ensure that there is no inflamed, infected, broken, raised, or swollen skin in that area to be worked on or an open wound or sore in the area to be worked on, infection or infestation, for example, lice, to prevent from safely performing the service. You will assess the client's consultation form for any medications and products used within the last 72 hours and consult on any known allergies. You will, and that's important because you need to know if there's any ingredient in any of your products that you're getting ready to use that the client might be allergic to. You will consult with the client on any facial surgeries within the last three months and if the client is under a physician's care. You'll assess if the client is prone to cold sores or fever blisters. You will assess if the client has used exfoliating or lightening agents within the last 72 hours like alpha hydroxy acids, beta hydroxy acids, hydroquinone, etc. You'll assess facial injections within the last three weeks like Botox or hyaluronic fillers. If the client is free from any of the above contraindications, you can move forward with the service. And as their esthetician and then a skincare professional, it's your job to note these things because all of that stuff affects the skin, its strength, its um, texture, its tenacity, its dryness or dehydration, all of that will affect what's gonna happen when you try to perform these services. So. Take a moment to do your best when it comes to a proper client consultation. Thankfully, my client is free from any of those and we can move forward. So, um, we don't have to have the client disrobe for any of these services. We're just going to get them comfortable first before we wash hands. So, what we would do is help the client um, in her clothing, lay down on the facial bed. We've got this towel here, and we're just going to make her even more comfortable. So we have a rolled towel here that we're going to put under her neck for additional support. Um, we have a hair net that means we're just going to keep the hair out of her away of her eyebrow and her eye area. And I have these little glue sticks that I'm going to use in a second just to help hold my eyelash rod on on my mannequin because it's not real. And then I've got an additional towel that I'm going to use to just cover up all the way up to the chin just because we're using um, things and we just want her to be comfortable and covered. We don't want anything to get on the clothes and the, and the neck or anything like that. So she's cozy and comfortable. And what you're going to do now is you are actually going to wash your hands so that you can start the service. So you would go to the sink and wet your hands, get the coin sized amount of liquid hand soap, and you're going to wash your hands down to your wrist. You're gonna wash the back of your hands down to your wrist and you're gonna wash your fingers and the back of your fingers. You will wash your fingertips and your nails. You're gonna wash between your fingers. You're gonna wash your fing between your fingers and your thumbs. You're gonna wash your thumbs and you're gonna wash your wrists. And you're gonna do all of that good proper wash for a minimum of 20 to 30 seconds. And then you're gonna give everything a thorough rinse underneath the sink when you feel like it's properly cleaned off you can get either disposable paper towels or a clean towel to turn the faucet off, dry your hands off, throw the paper towels in the trash. If it's now a dirty towel, it can go in a closed container um, until time to do laundry. And then of course, you're gonna grab your hand sanitizer, 70% ethyl alcohol minimum, and you're gonna sanitize your hands up. And you're gonna put on your gloves 
so that you can start to perform the service. So you've got a pair of disposable gloves. And what you're going to want to do is just take off any remover, or any remover, you're going to remove any makeup on the eye and brow area that might be there. So what we're going to do first is just get a little bit of makeup remover on the eyes resting, and then I'm going to go ahead and clean the brow first, and then I'll go back and finish with the eyes. And really, you're just removing any bit of oil, uh, dirt, makeup, uh, moisture, sebum, anything that might be on these brows and eyes, lashes, etc. You want to make sure that you're working with a clean slate. Everybody's going to wear a different amount, of course, so just take your time here. Dry everything off nicely. That's going to be important too. I'm going to take a pause for the video for a second and pretend like this isn't happening um, because I'm working on a mannequin. I'm going to put some stickers, sticky, double-sided sticky tape on her eyelid to try to get the rods to stick down to that. You would not be doing that ever with a client. You would actually be using the um, lash bonding adhesive that they give you um, to get the lashes to stick to the rod and you put a little bit of that underneath the... Um, rod and it sticks to the eyelid so just so you know I was just showing you that eye cleanse process and that's wet and this would have taken off this double sticky tape it would have ruined it so what I did was just keep it to the side so I can quickly take a pause in the video this is not real it's not happening just pretend like I'm not doing this I'm not taking my gloves off and putting double-sided tape on my mannequin this is simply to show you how the lash lashes will adhere and be lifted on the rod and the rod will stick to her lid because I've put something down for it to stick to. So that, this didn't happen. Back to the glove section. So I've cleaned her brow and lash thoroughly and now what's gonna happen is it's time to put that barrier cream on so I can put down the eye pads and we're going to um, be putting the iPad on top of the lower lashes all the way up um, because we're not lifting the lower lashes. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this barrier cream underneath the eye. And that little disposable iPad will stick to this barrier cream as well, which will help I'm 
it'll take a little bit under the brow, just a teensy. Okay. So now we're gonna get disposable eye pads. And we're gonna have the client look up so we can totally cover up that lower lash line. We're gonna take it as close to the lashes as we can get it. before we put it down. And then we are going to um, measure the size of the rod we need, which I know. So now I'm going to just place the rod. What I would really be doing is taking a little bit of the lash adhesive that helps the lashes stick to the rod. And I would place just a little bit on the lid, if it was a human, um, before you place the rod down. And you're trying to get the rod as close to the lashes as you can. And then you would hold it for... Um, five to ten seconds with a light press. So I'm going to do that and I'm obviously just you know put my little tape down because it's a mannequin and I'm hoping that this will help it um, stick the rod stick to her lid at least for long enough for the lashes to um, adhere to the rod because then the lashes will hold the rod down if this tape doesn't work. But if the tape was to get wet it wouldn't work at all. Oh ooh la la it worked at least for now. Let's not speak out loud too loud. And I'll go to the other side with my other rod. And I'm holding for a gentle five to 10 seconds on this. And now I'm going to take that lash adhesive that I just showed you and I am going to be spreading it on that rod and getting the lashes to stick to it. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to be taking my time to um, get the um, lashes placed exactly how I want them in order for those lashes because this is like bonding agent. So when we put that lash lift lotion on there, I am going to definitely want it to stay and it will stay in the place of how I have um, painted it right now with that this lifting lotion so or this bonding agent. So as I'm um, applying the, getting the lashes to stick to the rod, I'm also gonna take the time to make sure they're facing the right direction, that they're not clumped together, that there's going up and lifting up in the direction that I want them to and maybe not at an angle. So this is really where I'm gonna take the time to do that. When you apply the adhesive that's gonna make it work, stick to the rod, that's when you're going to take the time to get them in the right direction. So this might be tedious, it might take a little bit longer than you think, it's worth it in the end.
just takes time. Your client's iPad doesn't flop all over the place either. It's because I reuse it, which you don't do in the real world. Also, Move forward to the other eye. This is just not a rush procedure, and I don't mind that. I don't mind things taking time for the great results that you get. Um, sometimes it's just tedious. It's only um, frustrating in the sense that this is because it's not a real client. I mean, I hate you know you hate to say that it's your man again, but it's your man again. Um, so things do not. Um, work ideally as or exactly as they would with um, human lashes or being able for example like to have the rod adhere etc so you just have to bear with me and I apologize we have found a way to make it possible I'm grateful for that And once your lashes, I've got one more here, once your lashes are down, you will go to the next step of the lift, which is the lifting lotion um, for this. So just making sure once again that how you've bonded them to the rod, that's how they're gonna be. So making sure that they look the way you want them to, not clumpy in the same direction that you want them to go, all the nice things about pretty lifted lashes. 
that you want your client to see when they leave. And um, now you will be able to um, apply your lifting lotion to um, the base and then you're gonna take it all the way up until it's three quarters of the way up the brow and then you're gonna stop there. So you're gonna be taking it on um, the focus here, obviously the root of the eyelash and then you're gonna be applying it up that lash but stopping three quarters of the way because the tip of the lash is the weakest point of your lash and it um, is the part, the next part that's gonna be sloughing off and you don't want it to look fried or dry or weird and this, um, you want the base and the healthiest part of the lash that's gonna be there for a while to be up and open. So we're gonna stop three quarters of the way um, up the lash with our application and you're always checking in with your clients comfort level um, obviously this is a part that is um, like the perming part or lifting part so it may there may be a, a little smell to it there may be um, a little tingle to it um, but that's not a bad thing and you just have to talk the client through manage those expectations check on them make sure they're okay Obviously, we're not going to be getting anything into the eye, but we are getting it to the root of the lash and we are getting it three quarters of the way up. And then we're going to go to the other side and do exactly the same thing. Starting at the base and then taking it up three quarters of the way up the lash line. Really just focusing on where you're putting it and that it's avoiding the last quarter of your lashes or the client's lashes rather because we want to keep that intact. And then you, um, based on the formulation that you're using, you're going to be leaving it on for a set amount of time. And we're gonna say for this formulation that it's gonna stay on for um, five minutes, five to 10 minutes. Remember that, um, you know, everyone's processed differently. So this one is five to 10 minutes. And what we would do here while it's processing, we'd give that client some comfort, give her a little, uh, coverage while this has to sit there for a minute obviously you'll have your timer on um, and you know you can talk to her you can let her know you're there whatever it is if you want her if she wants to have that rest time you can be quiet for that amount of time whatever it is and we're just going to pretend like that time has elapsed because obviously we're doing a video we're not going to sit here for that amount of time so you're going to remove um, the coverage that you gave her on her eyes and then you're gonna be removing this last lash lift lotion, pardon me. So we're gonna do it dry first and then damp. So we're gonna be really gentle always, of course, we're working around the eye area. So we're gonna do a very gentle remove. Dry. On both. And then we're gonna go back in there with damp. And then I'm gonna take a little damp. Pad to do the same, gently. Next thing that you're going to do is you're going to apply the setting lotion. So I'm going to use a different brush and we're going to apply setting lotion to your lashes.
on both eyes, of course. Same concept. And then of course we always give the privacy because that has to stay on. You would be following manufacturer's directions and we're gonna say for this that it's a five minute window. So we're gonna wait here for five minutes and we're not really gonna wait here for the video but that's what would be happening. We would be allowing that um, to process according to the manufacturer's directions and they're saying um, for five minutes. So now we are going to um, remove and then I'm going to do a nice little dry remove and then I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna do a damp remove. Of course, we're gonna be, as always, gentle and delicate around the eye area. You can do this as many times as you need. So if you need to do more than one damp remove you can because this is when you're going to be taking them off the rod anyway so we're starting dry just to get a lot of that um, neutralizing lotion and then we're going to go in and really remove with the damp and we're always gentle and careful around the eyes always always be mindful So however many passes, if <clears throat> you need to do it more than once, you can. And you may see some of those lashes start to uh, lift off the rod. That's perfectly normal and that's what you want because you're getting ready to take them off anyway. Just depends on each individual. That water just does a nice job of letting that adhesive release. And then I'm gonna to go to the other eye, same thing, and do a really good damp cleanse. Once again, I'll probably be seeing some of those um, lashes release right on off of that rod as I remove the lifting, or the, excuse me, the neutralizing lotion. or as they call it, the setting lotion, same thing. As many passes as you need. And then we will remove gently both the rod and that, those disposable, <clears throat> excuse me, disposable eye pads. Going in with a moist Q-tip just to get those last few lashes that might not have um, come off the rod yet, although they pretty much all have except for these little, this little one right here. And then I will take off the um, iPad that's disposable and the rod. And um, as you see here, there's a lot of uh, yuck in my lashes that I will be combing through and getting it out but once again I really feel that is a uh, it's because we are using my mannequin and um, cholesterol as opposed to product you know for the service because it didn't happen on my mannequin in um, school um, I think it's a combination of the this lifting 
um, excuse me, this bonding agent and this um, cholesterol. It just makes a weird kind of reaction. So I'm going to take the time, of course, <clears throat> to clean out her lashes like I would with any client because I would never show the client something awful like this where it's got <clears throat> stuff. Excuse me, I need some water. <clears throat> Pardon me. Pardon me. A lot of videos, a lot of talking, scratchy throat, <clears throat> normal. Whew. It's just all over her, but we're getting it off and we're taking the time to do so. There we go. And the other eye, same thing, I'm gonna take a wooden stick Q-tip just to get the remainder of the, most of these are already off, but there's just a couple of lashes that are, there we go. Everything is off now that we're stuck to the rod. So I'm going to be removing the rod and this disposable pad at the same time. And then I am going to um, just do it a simple wipe here underneath. I'm gonna get these glued, the little, sticky tape that nobody would have on anyway, out of the way. And I'm gonna comb through her lashes to get that residue off as well that no one would have either. It's just, like I said, from the uh, cholesterol with the uh, lash um, bonding glue. So let me comb through, oh, that worked better. Maybe I'll use a four square on next time on the next video because it seemed to work a little bit quicker um, to get that extra residue out. It's a little bit remaining here, the glue. Combing through. Okay, nice. Much easier when I did it that route. Okay, so now I know for use a four square. And it should come right out. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Now, we need to do our uh, brow lamination. So what we're going to want to do, we've cleaned that brow, we've prepared the area, we've put a little bit of that um, barrier cream under the brow there so that we can now um, prepare the brow. And what we will want to do is... We will want to take our brow with a little bit of a bonding agent, so we've got the glue here that we would put on, and we have a what's called a Y comb. And we're gonna take our time to comb up this brow, just like we did where we took the time to comb up the lashes on the rod. We don't have a rod, we're simply using a little bit of that bonding agent with the Y comb to comb it up and out in the shape and position that we want it to adhere in. So we would need to take a little bit of the bonding. We would be working a little bit at a time, just like we did with the rod on our lash lift, but we're just doing, doing it simply um, for each brow. So this little comb is our helper and the bonding agent helps it to stay in the position that you want it to stay in. So what I'm gonna do now is the other brow. I would be putting a little bit of that bonding agent on and I would be using my Y comb and I would be combing my brow with the bonding agent, taking my time because remember the position that it's in when I have my bonding agent and the comb action going on is the position that it is going to stay in for the rest of the lamination. And then once 
I've done both brows with the bonding agent. And once again, that takes time. It's just that meticulous time of the same thing, the comb through, getting it to stay like you want it to stay with the bonding agent. Then I'm gonna take one of my little doodads here, teensy little tools, and I'm gonna get that um, uh, essentially like a perming solution, like what, what was with the lifting solution. And we are going to apply it from the base of the brow, three quarters of the way up the brow. So just like the same thought process with the lash lift. So we're not gonna to go to the edge of the brow where it's weakest, but we're gonna take it up on that brow, three quarters of the way up, and then we're gonna go over what the manufacturer's suggestions are to where, how, and why. And remember, that bonding solution, that combing we did initially with a Y comb created the shape that we want this to live in. Now I'm going to do the other side. Taking it from the base of the brow, three quarters of the way up. And then we're going to discuss manufacturer's suggestions or recommendations for time allotment, like how long you leave it on. So let's talk about that. So they say for fine brow, maybe three to four minutes. For a fine tinted brow, four to five minutes. For a natural healthy looking brow, five to six minutes. And for a coarse but healthy uh, brow, six to seven minutes. And we've got here a fine tinted brow. So we're gonna leave ours on for um, four to five minutes. So we're not gonna do that um, based on the video, but we're gonna pretend like the four to five minutes have uh, elapsed. And so then we're gonna do uh, a dry wipe and then a damp wipe. So we're gonna do a very gentle dry remove of that um, laminating product that is essentially like your perming product. So you're gonna take that time to just gently wipe it off while it's dry, like you're using a dry cotton to wipe that, and then just follow up with a nice damp, not soaking, but damp um, to remove the rest. And then um, you would be getting ready to apply your neutralizing lotion. And you would definitely use another little tool like you just did with that, a new one. And you would apply it exactly in the same way that you applied your laminating, your lifting or perming, whatever you want to call it in your brow. And to take your time to do that. And then we'll go over our manufacturer's recommendations for this part. Always checking in with your client, checking in with their comfort, see how everything's going. And then we're gonna do our other side. Applying it as well all over and making sure that you're getting it to the base all the things you did for the other one and then you will follow manufacturers instructions so let's just review those so for a fine very very fine brow or fine and tinted brow 
you'd leave this neutralizing lotion on for five minutes. And if you're um, natural healthy brow or coarse, coarse healthy brow, you're gonna leave it on for six minutes. So remember, we have that fine tinted brow, so we're gonna take it off after five minutes. So we're not gonna sit here for five minutes based on the video, but we're gonna go ahead and remove it now. So I'm gonna do a nice dry and then a damp. So we're going to um, gently remove and as many passes as you need. You could start like easy with one pass with the dry and then if you need a couple passes with the damp to feel like you've really gotten everything off, feel free to do that. So I'm still doing my dry here on this side. Dry remove, gentle. And then now I'm gonna go follow up with a damp and I'm gonna take care of that. Damp, 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 remove. Um, looking good here, looking real, real good. We know the client's gonna like what she sees for sure based on what we see right now. So a nice little damp. And remember, however many passes, you know, do what you need to do. And then um, we still have another step that we have to do. We have to put on a little bit of a wax um, solution. So we're gonna take our third and final teeny little brush here, and we're gonna put that sheen, that shine that goes on. So we're gonna do that now. Um, combing that through. On both, because it's gonna be how you finish and they're gonna be like, ooh la la. So we've got that on, and then you wanna get that a nice brow brush and comb those brows um, in that shape. And they have that nice little waxy shine on there that makes them look like a million bucks, so they're all shiny. So you're gonna take a minute with that brow brush and comb it before you present it to the client so that they're like ooh la la. And one thing to note with your lamination, make sure you're, we're gonna go over all of those, like review all of those like uh, maintenance and aftercare things, you do, your brows don't just stay in place. You do have to comb them every day to the shape that you want them, but because they've been through this process, they will be very easy for you to do that with and then they'll hold. So it's just important to note that like your lash lift might stay up and out with your brows, they may get all squirrely as you sleep and you just have to comb them back to where they need to be. Okay, so you are finished with that part as well. So um, your client did not have to disrobe for this service. So you would present the look of the lash lift and the brow lamination to your client. She'll be in love with it. Um, and then you can um, let her get up um, and just uh, grab her things to go with you out to the um, client waiting area. And so you get to take off your gloves and toss them. So you're going to go over all the details of your um, maintenance and aftercare. You're gonna re-review everything you know that they already know about um, a lash lift, things that they cannot do or it will ruin the service, which nobody wants to pay for a service and have it ruined. Um, you're gonna get them booked for a future appointment based on how long um, you think that this service will last because they're gonna wanna maintain it because it's so great, all of it. And um, you can go from there. So that's kind of what you're looking at when you take the client um, out and then you're gonna get them checked out and booked for the next follow-up appointment and then you can move forward because you've got another client coming in. So you've gotta get back into that room to um, prepare. So the first thing that you wanna do is see if you've got any single use items that you haven't discarded and you wanna go ahead and toss those in the trash. You wanna get all those implements that you used um, that are now dirty and place them in a closed container labeled to be disinfected. All of the sheets and the bedding that you use, towels, etc., you need to put in a closed container until it's time to do laundry. And then you're going to identify a proper cleansing agent. You'll read the manufacturer's directions and then you'll follow the manufacturer's directions so you can wipe down your workstation and area with that cleaning solution to remove debris. Then you'll identify a disinfectant that is bacterial cytal virucidal, fungicidal, and EPA approved for use in a salon setting. You're gonna to need to put another pair of disposable gloves on. You'll read and follow those manufacturer's instructions, directions for mixing and or using appropriate aerosol disinfectant. 
Then you'll disinfect electrical equipment, store it in a clean area separate from the other implements. And then you can take those gloves off, toss them, um, and it would be time for that final hand wash. So you go to the sink and wet your hands, find a um, coin size amount of liquid hand soap, wash your hands down to your wrist, and wash the back of your hands down to your wrist. You're gonna wash your fingers and you're gonna wash the backs of your fingers. You're gonna wash your fingertips and your nails. You're gonna wash between your fingers. You're gonna wash between your fingers and your thumbs. You're gonna wash your thumbs. You're gonna wash your wrists. You're gonna do all of that interlocking washing of hands for a minimum of 20 to 30 seconds and then you're gonna give everything a thorough proper rinse under the sink. When you feel like you have rinsed everything off appropriately, you can find some disposable paper towels or a towel and turn off the faucet. Dry your hands completely. If it's paper towels, you're gonna to toss it in the trash. If it's now a dirty towel, you'll put it in with the other dirty linen in a closed container until time to do the laundry. And then you're gonna grab your hand sanitizer, 70% ethyl alcohol, and you are going to sanitize those hands up. When you have properly sanitized your hands, you will know that you can move forward and get ready for your next service or you have cleaned your room and station up in the proper way for you to be able to go home. So that concludes your video for brow lamination and lash lift.